Good morning, friends, and welcome to the Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben. Nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and to your well being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 27 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne and psoriasis and eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments of all kinds, autoimmune issues, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may say that's a miracle, this healing and renewing system is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we're here for you on the bright side. We welcome your calls at 855-660-4261. Try to get on board early. The phone lines do fill up quickly. I like to get as many calls as we can as we can fit in. So try to get on board early. It's first come, first serve at 855-660-4261. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear us talk about on the program or recommend on the program or advertise on the program, go over to brightsideben.com, take a look at our shopping cart with all the longevity products, including my personal favorite, the BTT, Beyond Tangy Tangerine Multivitamin Mineral Complex Powder. You add to water and drink. For you guys who are doing the longevity business, you don't really need to uh, to be selling 400 plus products. There's 400 products in the line. All you really need is a few, and one of the most important is the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Most folks will notice results in one or two doses. Results like weight loss, appetite suppression, more energy, lower blood pressure, better skin, and it doesn't take very long, folks. Within one or two doses, you're going to start to notice some results if you're like most folks. It is 50 bucks a canister. You can find out all about it at BrightSideBend.com. If you have an Android phone, check out the Brightside app. You can carry the Brightside with you on your Android phone. Thank you to Ted Anderson. And if you want to review any of the programs that any of the programs that you've heard or any of the programs that you missed, you can go over to brightsideben.com and take a look at uh, listen to our archives. We have all the programs archived. We also have them at benfuchsarchive.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK. Appreciate that very much. Benfuchsarchive.com. All the programs are tagged and labeled. Uh, all the archive programs are tagged and labeled at Ben fuchsarchive.com. All right, thanks for joining us on the Bright Side. Got to see Dr. Wallach yesterday. He was entertaining as always. That guy is so brilliant. That guy is so right on. He was talking about how uh, mu muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, these kinds of diseases that we consider that we just have to live with, that we're condemned to deal with, are reversible, and he's dead on, right on. No matter what your health challenge is, folks, it's reversible, given enough time, of course, depending on how far along, uh, how far down the, uh, down the uh, wormhole, you, wormhole you've gone. Uh, all diseases, all breakdown degenerative diseases are reversible. This is the premise. This is the premise of the bright side. This is the premise of the nature of the healing body. The body is a healing and regenerating system. You do need to change your lifestyle, though. You need to change the way you eat. You need to uh, change the way you handle your business. And one of the most important things you need to do is get yourself on a nutritional supplement program. We've been talking about MSM sulfur. Sulfur is truly an incredible, absolutely stunningly important element. MSM is nutritional sulfur. Methyl sulfonyl methane is a form of sulfur that is produced from seaweed. It's a natural form of sulfur. It's easy for the body to absorb. It's got wonderful, pro all the properties of sulfur, really, you can get from MSM. Next to sulfur's tissue hardening properties, you get detoxification from sulfur. In fact, no element on the periodic table is more important to the body for detoxification than sulfur. We haven't really talked a lot about sulfur and detox, but rest assured, folks, it is the body's primary detoxification element, and sulfur deficiencies are more, are becoming more and more common. 
Most of the important detox substances in the body work with sulfur. Glutathione, perhaps the most important detox substance in the body, has a little piece of sulfur on it. Sulfur turns long chains of sugar molecules, pieces of sugar, into detox compounds. In fact, in a world that's filled with these crazy magic formulas and magic potions, magic recipes for building your immune system and fighting cancer and just staying healthy, very, very few natural products have the amazing health benefits with the complete non-toxicity that you get from from MSM sulfur and from polysaccharides, from, from long-chain sugars that have sulfur on them. One of the most important is something called fucoidin which is the active ingredient in longevity's Z radical. Just Google fucoidin in cancer, fucoidin in immunity. Fucoidin is a classic example of a sulfur sugar compound, and it's truly amazing detox properties come from that element sulfur. One of my all-time favorite supplements is something called NAC or N-acetylcysteine. I've got a blog post up at pharmacistben.com on NAC, talking about how you can use NAC for for uh, helping reduce the, the irritation that can be caused by acne, topical acne products like benzoyl peroxide. NAC is used in hospital emergency rooms for Tylenol poisoning, which is a common, uh, a common source of uh, liver toxicity. It's one of the leading causes of liver toxicity. NAC is great for hangovers. If you're on Proactive or Clearasil or any benzoyl peroxide products, put some NAC in your Proactive or put some NAC in your benzoyl benzoyl peroxide product or put some NAC in a moisturizing cream and you can help reduce the redness and inflammation that's associated with some of these acne medicines. And then there's sulfur's very important role when it comes to bile. Next to blood and lymph, the most important fluid system in the body is bile. And one of the most important elements in bile, the element that accounts for bile's amazing detergency, fat dissolving property. Bile is your body's soap. It dissolves fatty and oily substances. And it gets its fat dissolving and oil oil dissolving properties from sulfur. Bile is a soap. It's a cleanser and its soapy properties come from sulfur. Bile cleanses the oily factors in food. It breaks up the oily factors in food. Oil factors in food include fatty vitamins and fatty nutrients. Bile also cleanses the liver of oil factors, including old hormones. Once your bile is messed up, once your bile becomes sludgy and thickened, you are off to the disease races, and there's more and more literature that's showing that there's a very important relationship between sludgy, dirty bile and heart disease between sludgy, dirty bile and atherosclerosis. And guess what? You need sulfur to make bile. Sulfur is highly electrical. It's highly magnetic. It makes things happen. It makes fats more soluble. It magnetically attracts toxins. It's part of your detox system. It's part of your bile system. Bile also is part of the detox system. If you don't have a gallbladder, you've got to be really, really careful of toxicity because you've lost your main reservoir of bile. If you don't have a gallbladder, you would be wise, in my opinion, to start using MSM sulfur, to start using bile salts that you'll get in the Ultimate Enzymes from Longevity, to start using lecithin, to start using apple cider vinegar, all of which can support fat metabolism in the bile system in the body. This attractive power that sulfur has to pull toxins in is called chelation. Many of you have heard of this term chelation. Chelation is a fancy scientific word that simply means a magnetic attraction. Sulfur chelates or magnetically attracts heavy metals. It magnetically attracts toxins and viruses and microbes. It's one of the most important, maybe the most important supplement you could ever use for protecting yourself from radiation. MSM sulfur. Look, guys, can you see how absolutely amazing this stuff is? And we're talking with no toxicity. And we're talking ridiculously cheap, 15 bucks for 100 grams of this stuff. And that's buying it retail. Seaweed, NAC, MSN, these are all sulfur compounds that can protect you from radiation, that have detoxifying properties, and more. I'll tell you about how this whole thing relates to skin uh, skin care here in a minute when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side of the Genesis Communication Network.
we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Got a couple lines open for you at 8 855-660-4261, We're talking about sulfur and MSM. One of the best places you could use sulfur is in skin care. Yes, skin care. Sulfur is involved in hardening tissue, collagen, connective tissue, wrinkle-fighting collagen. Requires sulfur. Sulfur deficiencies will keep you from making effective collagen. Sulfur is used topically to deal with acne. It's got a purifying property. In fact, many topical acne products, topical antifungal products take advantage of sulfur. You can make your own acne cream by dumping some MSM, uh, MSM capsules into some cream, or you can go buy precipitated sulfur at a, at a pharmacy. That's the smelly kind of sulfur. It's a little bit more medicinal than MSM sulfur, and you can put it in your own moisturizing cream, make your own acne cream. You could put sulfur in an oatmeal mask. Just take some oats and water, mix it up with some sulfur, or throw it in the MSM capsule. Excuse me. If you want, you can throw in a raw egg into your mask. Raw egg also has sulfur in it. Raw egg has natural antibiotic properties that may help you with broken skin or blemished skin. And eggs are going to give you some B vitamins as well. Insulin chemistry depends on sulfur. The more insulin you're burning through, the more sulfur you need. The more sugar you're eating, the more sulfur you need. Sulfur is a great way, sulfur supplementation is a great way to make sure that you're building bones too. And as you'll recall, this whole discussion about connective tissue and sulfur and nutritional supplements for building connective tissue began when we were talking about osteoporosis. We're still talking about osteoporosis. And as we finish up sulfur, we're going to talk about vitamin A and how important that one is, that nutrient is for helping build connective tissue and building bone. If your doctor really wants to help you with your bones, what he should be doing is focusing on sulfur, focusing on vitamin A, focusing on fat absorption out of the gut, and focusing a lot less on writing prescriptions for nasty bisphosphonate drugs like Fosamax. We haven't gotten to talk about these bisphosphonate drugs, but they are truly among the most hideous drugs in the entire United States pharmacopoeia. In fact, I believe, uh, maybe not the next show, but in a couple of shows, we'll talk about Fosamax and these uh, bisphosphonate drugs. Another great way to get sulfur is from sulfur amino acids. These are building amino acids. A sulfur amino acid is sulfur plus protein, or sulfur protein, some people call them. Typically, amino acids are only carbohydrates with a little piece of nitrogen, but in the case of three special amino acids, you got a little piece of sulfur attached, and remember, sulfur is activating. Sulfur is building, and when you stick a piece of sulfur onto these amino acids, you get some really interesting properties. Sulfur makes things water-soluble, so when you stick a little piece of sulfur onto these amino acids, it allows them to dissolve in water more readily and allows them to form links with greater ease and links and connections to other molecules. Molecules means building. So sulfur amino acids are really, really important for building and repairing. In fact, sulfur amino acids are the most important of the building and repair amino acids. In fact, you can consider sulfur amino acids to be among the key amino acids in all of life. Remember, sulfur is activating. The same way it activates sugar and polysaccharides, it activates amino acids as well. Sulfated amino acids are super important for building, and they're found in animal products. Plants don't need to repair themselves as much as animals, and these building and repair amino acids, specifically methionine and cysteine, they're found in vegetables. You can get them in beans especially, but they're found in highest concentration in animal products, high-protein foods, especially whey and egg. Then there's seaweed. Seaweed is a great source of sulfur compounds. Seaweed gets converted into MSM, or seaweed helps make MSM. After seaweed, beans are probably going to be your best vegetarian source of sulfur. And as long as you don't have any issues with allergies or, or toxicities associated with beans, you want to get them a couple of times, two, three times a week. In the world of vegetables, onions and garlic are good sources of sulfur. Cruciferous vegetables are good sources of sulfur. Steam some broccoli and bok choy or kale or cauliflower or Brussels sprouts. Make sure you put oil on your kale or your Brussels sprouts. Help pull out some of those minerals and phytonutrients. Help pull out some of that sulfur. 
Keep in mind though, the sulfur that you're getting from veggies is not going to be as reliable a supplement as the sulfur that you're getting, as reliable an element as the sulfur that you get from animal products or from MSM sulfur. This is another example of the triangle of disease. You, not, you need to have a fully functioning bile system, you need to have a fully functioning liver, you need to have a fully functioning fat absorption system, and you need to have a healthy intestine if you're going to be absorbing sulfur effectively. If you've got Crohn's disease or celiac or ulcerative colitis, all of these can compromise the absorption of sulfur and sulfur amino acids. If you have any digestive issue, people, get yourself on MSM. Don't try to rely on sulfur from foods. Get yourself on MSM sulfur. It's worth it. It's completely non-toxic, and it's inexpensive to boot. Then there is another really interesting sulfur compound, excuse me, very similar to to MSM. It also comes from seaweed, and this is a topical substance that can be used for arthritis, it could be used to treat cancer, it could be injected right in your blood. It's super non-toxic. The FDA hates this stuff, by the way. It's called DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. It's extremely similar in chemical nature to MSM. You can almost think of it like MSM, and it has some absolutely amazing, amazing properties. We're not gonna, I'm not going to get to finish all of them today, and I want to spend some time on DMSO, but I just want to introduce it to you guys, especially if you're dealing with something called interstitial cystitis. In fact, while the FDA hates DMSO, and uh, it's still not legal to be used as a, uh, as a uh, medicine for arthritis, which is really where DMSO excels, is in treating inflammatory diseases like arthritis. Even the FDA cannot deny the effectiveness of DMSO for interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis is kind of like a bladder infection. It's not a bladder infection. It doesn't involve bacteria, but it feels like the absolute most miserable bladder infection you could ever imagine. Anybody who has IC will tell you it is an absolutely horrible, miserable health condition. And DMSO is like magic for interstitial cystitis. In fact, the first guy who started using DMSO, the guy who's considered the father of DMSO, Dr. Stanley Jacobs, first started doing research on DMSO for dealing with interstitial cystitis, this type of bladder irritation. Now, it's not a bladder infection in the sense that it doesn't involve bacteria necessarily, although sometimes it starts off as a bladder infection. If you're dealing with interstitial cystitis, chances are you're also dealing with fibromyalgia. Chances are you're also dealing with chronic pain in other parts of your body. Chances are you've got other things going on in the system, in the biological system in your body. That's because interstitial cystitis is an inflammatory condition. And guess what, guys? DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, non-toxic, gentle dimethyl sulfoxide that you can inject right in your veins, that's how non-toxic this stuff is, is one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory, free radical quenching, free radical scavenging substances you could ever use. And yet the only place you can find this stuff is on the internet or in a hardware store. There are so many wonderful benefits for DMSO, for using DMSO. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll cover, I'll tell you a little bit about it when we come back from our break, but we'll cover most of it on our next Bright Side episode. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Five six six zero forty two sixty one is our number. We do have a couple lines open for you. If you want to learn it about the longevity products or purchase any of the longevity products you hear us talk about on the program, you can go over to brightsideben.com and take a look at our shopping cart. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. If you want to start a longevity business and get yourself all the tax breaks that are associated with having a longevity business for a one-time $10 fee, you can enjoy all kinds of tax benefits just for a one-time $10 fee. It's not even an investment, it's a fee, uh, as Dr. Wallach was saying uh, yesterday. You can uh, find out all about it at 866-735-2470, or you can click on the Join the Team link 
on brightsideben.com. All right. Let's see. MSMO, DMSO, DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. Kind of like MSM. You can think of it like a liquid form of MSM. It comes from seaweed, just like MSM does. It's non-toxic, just like MSM does. It's a powerful, powerful free radical scavenger. It's a, uh, been used to treat cancer. It's been used to protect, to provide protection from radiation. Got a paper here, an alternative mechanism for radio protection by dimethyl sulfoxide. And this is from the Journal of Radiation Research, uh, 2010, using DMSO for uh, radiation protection. DMSO has been used to treat interstitial cystitis quite effectively. It's been used to treat autoimmune diseases like scleroderma and lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. It's been used to treat ulcerative colitis. These are all published research articles for using DMSO. Why do you get all these multiple benefits, these wide-ranging benefits from this amazing DMSO stuff? It's because it's such a powerful antioxidant and free radical scavenger and anti-inflammatory. That means for pretty much any kind Kind of health challenge, you're going to get benefits from DMSO, yet the FDA hates this stuff. Well, guess what? Veterinarians know about DMSO, equestrians know about DMSO, and it's used a lot in the horse business to help deal with arthritis and, and uh, joint and tendon problems in horses, but you get the same benefits using DMSO yourself. We'll talk more about DMSO and its importance for health, and also I want to talk a little bit about interstitial cystitis and how interstitial cystitis is different from from urinary tract infections, even though the pain can be quite similar. We'll do that on our next Bright Side episode. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, 855-660-4261 is our number. Michael in Michigan, welcome to The Bright Side. What's up, buddy? Good morning, Ben. How are you? Doing good. What's cooking today? My, uh, my daughter, uh, she's uh, 24 right now. Uh, uh, back when I think she was 15 or 16, she started a, a urinary uh, infection. Okay. And to, till today, she still has it. Um, she's on a, uh, right now she's on Theracran. Uh, it's a cranberry oh, juice deal? No, it's, I don't know. It's Did Theracran. you say ther- Theracran? Is that what you said? Theracran. Theracran. Sounds like it's a, some kind of, uh, cran- it's an over-the-counter deal. She gets it a dr- I'm, not, over the- I'm not sure. Uh, Theracran is a is a sounds like a cranberry a cranberry supplement. You know, cranberries are very interesting, and urinary tract infections are kind of interesting. By the way, has she been diagnosed officially? Did they do a did they check for bacteria in the urine? Did they do a urine sample and all that stuff? And they found bacteria in the urine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so it's officially a urinary tract infection. All right, so here's the deal with UTIs. First of all, the reason that cranberry juice works is because it can slime away bacteria that come to rest in the, in the urinary tract. The UTI, a bacterial infection, is caused by bacteria that live in the urinary tract and populate. These bacteria do their nasty work, do their dirty work with sticky substances that they, stick, that, that they secrete that allows them to stick onto the cells of the urinary tract. Cranberry juice contains sugars that can slime those bacteria away, and that's how cranberry juice does its work. That's how probably Theracran, although I don't know about that product in particular, it sounds like it's a a standardized cranberry extract kind of supplement. That's how that product works. So anything you can use to slime bacteria away are going to be in your interest in taking care of the acute issues, the immediate emergency issues of a urinary tract infection. And I'm using that word uh, emergency advisedly because it feels like a really, really miserable type of emergency. So using cranberry juice or using the Theracran is a nice strategy. But what I'd be doing, I'd be using the Z-Radical. The Z-Radical contains these uh, same kinds of sliming compounds. Uh, uh, they're polysaccharide kinds of compounds that can slime those, those sticky attachments that the bacteria have to the urinary tract cells. It's a lectin-like attachment. We've talked about lectins in the past. In fact, the same reaction that happens between gluten and the cells of your intestine is what happens between bacteria and the cells of your urinary tract. And dealing with this kind of sticky attachment is a wonderful strategy. Ba- uh, uh, polysaccharides and cranberry juice can do it. The polysaccharide can help wash away those, the, those bacteria. The, uh, uh, the polysaccharides in the Z-radical can help wash away those bacteria. I would also be using uh, 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 
uh, Lugol solution, iodine solution. You can read up on it. Dr. Jonathan Wright has written a lot about using Lugol solution and iodine for killing the bacteria. But most importantly, when you have urinary tract infections, you're dealing with something that is suppressing the immune system. Under ordinary circumstances, your immune system should be able to handle bacteria. If you've got a urinary tract infection, chances are you're doing something chronically that is suppressing your immune system. You're putting stuff in your body that's keeping your immune system from doing its work. Uh, more than likely, it has to do with food. And I hate to keep saying this, but you know what, guys? I don't care if you're dealing with arthritis and autoimmune disease or urinary tract infection or acne or whatever. The first thing you want to do is look for digestive symptoms. The most likely way that the body breaks down is because of food that's in, substances that are introduced through food into the digestive tract. So you got to focus on the digestive system first, even if it doesn't seem like there's a digestive connection. The digestive system is linked to the immune system. The immune system is uh, inflammation is a, a sign that the immune system is, is kicking in. So something's going on in immunity, something's going on with the inflammatory system, and that means foods. Does your, uh, you may not know this, she may not know it. Are there any issues with the digestive system? Any, any heartburn, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, any of these kinds of things that sound familiar? History of food allergies, history of gluten intolerance, history of dairy intolerance. Anything sound familiar, sir? Um, no, not not to my knowledge. Ask her. Ask her to probe. It's in her interest to find those things. Using probiotics can help balance out the, the wrong kind of bacteria. UTIs are caused by the wrong kind of bacteria. Getting on a good probiotic supplement can help. Using vitamin C is one of the all-time great ways to boost the immune system. Using vitamin E is another great way to boost the immune system. 5 to 10 grams of vitamin C a day, perhaps uh, uh, 400 or so, anywhere from 400 to 800 international units of vitamin E a day. Both of those are great for boosting the immune system. Sulfur, we've been talking about sulfur for a long time. Sulfur's got wonderful detoxing properties. Get her on MSM sulfur, maybe 1,000 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams a day. And then, of course, the sulfated polysaccharides that you find in the, uh, in the uh, Z-radical product, the fucoidin, can also be helpful. Sulfur, a vitamin E, vitamin C, probiotics, sliming the bacteria away, correcting digestive problems. These are all great strategies for uh, dealing with UTIs. And then don't forget about using uh, using uh, Lugol solution or iodine. Read up on that uh, Dr. Jonathan Wright's work. Google UTIs and Lugol solution. Thank you so much for your call. We'll be back with more on the Bright Side right after this. Welcome back to the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 855-660-4261 is our number. If you want to learn more about the Longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com and take a look at our shopping cart. And if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team and start a Longevity business and make some money selling Longevity products and get all the tax benefits that you get from just signing up, for a one-time $10 fee, you can click on the Join the Team link, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Back to the phones we go. Rosa in Texas. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello. Hello, Rosa. What's up? Oh, um, how are you, Ben? Thank you for answering my call. Sure. Um, I'm calling concerning H. pylori. Okay. And also um, fatty liver. Oh, for you? Yourself? Yeah. Okay, well, join the crowd because one out of three Americans is dealing with fatty liver disease. They call it now, it's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It used to be if you had fatty liver disease, you were, you were an alcoholic, you were drinking a pint a day, but these days it's just part of growing older. And if you go to the doctor, they'll just tell you, oh, yeah, well, everybody's got fatty liver. It's just part of growing older. It's not part of growing older. It's a big problem. The liver is not supposed to be accumulating fat. When the liver accumulate, starts to accumulate fat, all of the liver functions, which are many, 
begin to become compromised. That means energy production, that means hormone production, that means uh, the detoxification, which is the liver's most important function, one of the liver's most important function. Pretty much your entire body is going to be messed up once fat starts to develop in the liver. And there's a couple big time reasons for that. Uh, first of all, if you got H. pylori, that means you're not processing your food correctly, which means toxicity is going to start to build up in the liver. Something very interesting happens, by the way, when the liver becomes toxic. The body, in an attempt to keep the toxins from getting out into the blood, will lock up the liver. It will close the outlet valves of the liver, and the liver, liver can start to swell up. And this can cause a whole backing up of all the fluids in the body, and you can end up with hemorrhoids and varicose veins. Any of this stuff sound familiar, by the way? Any issues with hemorrhoids or varicose veins, ma'am? Um, varicose veins, yeah. Okay, all of this is connected. So what you've got to do is we've got to start processing foods more effectively. Now, one of the biggest reasons why the liver becomes fatty is because of fructose, fruit sugar, which is handled exclusively by the liver. We've talked many times about how fructose is not the same as ordinary sugar or ordinary uh, sucrose, uh, which is uh, composed of glucose and fructose. Ordinary table sugar is a combination of fructose and glucose. When you take in straight fructose, like high fructose corn syrup, which is not straight fructose, but a high concentration of fructose, or if you're eating a lot of fruit or fruit juice, you put a serious burden on the liver. So the first, well, the first thing you want to do is correct digestive issues. That means you're going to have to start dealing with this H. pylori. Number one, what I'd be doing, uh, if you want to start dealing with the H. pylori, number one, what I'd be doing is pro Probiotics, good bacteria. Secondly, H. pylori does not cannot live in high uh, uh, in a lot of acid. The stomach is supposed to be super acidic. Over time, what ends up happening is, and this sometimes the H. pylori contributes to this, is we don't produce enough stomach acid. So acidification of the stomach is also going to be important for dealing with H. pylori. Number one, get yourself on the nightly essence probiotics. Number two, start taking in supplements that help you make stomach acid. One of the most important is something called betaine HCL. You can get betaine HCL by itself, or you can get betaine HCL in the ultimate enzymes from Longevity. And if I were you, I'd be using the ultimate enzymes from Longevity with apple cider vinegar after all your meals. The apple cider vinegar, the betaine HCL in the, uh, in the ultimate enzymes, and the enzymes all will work together to help, help you process food more effectively. What you also may want to consider doing, Rosa, is having a pharmacist actually make hydrochloric acid drops for you. Hydrochloric acid drops can help you process your food, and they can help you with the H. pylori as well. Uh, so probiotics, apple cider vinegar, betaine HCL, hydrochloric acid, these are all great ways to keep, uh, to keep uh, H. pylori at bay. And then as far as the fatty liver goes, uh, you want to, number one, uh, figure out what kind of foods you're having a problem with and eliminate those foods. And number two, stay away from fructose. You may also want to start taking in supplements that help you process sugar. Treat your fatty liver as a digestive health issue where toxins are accumulating in the body, number one, and as a sugar issue where you're intaking a lot of, a lot of fructose, but maybe even a lot of glucose as well. Chances are you may also be uh, dealing with some prediabetes issues and all of these strategies, will, because they'll help you process sugar, will also help you with any kind of pre-diabetes issues that you have, and you'll also find that you'll, you're going to lose weight. Uh, I'm, I can't see, obviously, you're on the telephone, but based on what you're, uh, the fatty liver and the H. pylori, you got to have some weight issues going on as well, and that's compound, mm -hmm. correct? You, does that make sense, yeah. ma'am? Okay. Now, yeah. I I'm not saying that because I'm psychic. I'm telling you that because that's what happens when you have fatty liver and you're not processing things correctly. So you'll notice that you're losing weight once you start to address your liver issues, and that'll tell you that you're on the right track once the pounds start to drop. Last strategy, This is, and I'm, I'm saying it last, but it's not, uh, it's not least. It's last but not least, and that is try to eat a lot, significantly less calories. The less burden you put on your digestive system, the less work you make your digestive system do, the healthier it's going to be for your liver and the faster your liver is going to be able to recover from the fattiness, from the accumulation of fat. So ingestion of less calories, even if, even if it means fasting completely one day a week or so, is really in your interest. Certainly reducing your caloric intake. If you're having a hard time reducing your caloric intake, chances are you're, you're feeling like you need to have sugar, you need to have bread, or you need to have cereal. You know what I'm saying? like you feel like you're addicted to these kinds of foods, 
Right. Go for more. Go for more protein. Don't do it all at once. You want to take your protein in divided doses because the liver is processing protein. So you want to be taking in more protein throughout the day. Break your protein up, maybe maybe 10, 15, 20 grams, three or four times a day. That is a couple of teaspoons of protein. Get the one world way. Do a couple of teaspoons of one world way throughout the day. It's very important throughout the day. You're not don't want to overburden the liver. You guys who are doing protein supplements, you should know that if you do too much protein all at once, that can get turned to fat if you're not working out and you're not using uh, you're not using that protein. So you want to divide your protein doses up, and then you want to get yourself on the ultimate EFAs and divide uh, take those in divided doses as well, and that can help you with your sugar cravings, and that too will reduce some of the load, some of the the workload, the burden on the liver, and that can help you with your fatty liver. So lots of wonderful strategies that you can use there. Uh, you might want to consider also for an appetite suppressant, getting on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is one of my favorite ways to quiet down that snacking impulse that we have in the middle of the day. It's a wonderful appetite suppressant, and as I, I said earlier, it's a great way on its own to help you lose weight. Any, does that help you, ma'am? Anything else I can I can help you with? Yes. Um, okay. With the fatty liver, can I take coconut oil? Sure. Absolutely, you can take coconut oil. Everybody can take coconut okay. oil. It's awesome. And in fact, in fact, one last one last thing. Now that you mention it, there's something called MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride oil, and MCT oil is found in coconut oil. So using coconut oil can help you get MCT oil. And the reason why MCT oil is important is it's not processed by the liver. It goes right to work. Most most fats are processed by the liver. MCT oil is one of the only fats that's not processed by the liver, so you'll get the energy that you get from fat without having to deal with the liver, without having to deal with burdening the liver. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead, ma'am. Okay, and uh, the apple cider vinegar, I do have acid reflux. Don't worry well, about it. Acid reflux is non-acid reflux. In other words, it's caused okay. by too little acid. You, you guys get this? Acid reflux disease is caused by too little acid, not too much acid. So, yes, apple cider vinegar is a great way to deal with acid reflux disease. Okay, so um, can I ask you one more sure. question? Go ahead. Okay, what about Portiagers? Uh, not understand us. Say that again. Porchy Eggers. Porchy Eggers is what the doctor told me many years ago that I had gotten from, I believe it was from Greece. This uh, comes from Greece. And it's like spots, dark spots on your lips. And uh, Spell it for me. I, I, I never heard it. I, I, unless I'm not understanding what you're saying, spell it for me. Do you know how to spell it? Uh, no. Um, All right, well, I'll tell you about, let me tell you about dark spots. I, I don't know what that is, and I, I you know, uh, Portiagers. I, I haven't heard of that term. But dark spots are a sign of pigmentation. All right. Now we only got about a minute here, so I'm going to tell you something real quick. Okay, ma'am. Listen up, Rosa. Uh, dark spots are a sign of pigmentation. Pigmentation is a sign of oxidation or rusting. Rusting is an oxidation reaction, and what you want to do for any pigmentation issues is you want to use antioxidants and things that help you balance out estrogen, which is a powerful uh, darkening agent, estrogen is. So progesterone cream, vitamin C, vitamin E, and take care of that digestive system, and that will help you with the oxidation of melanin, the inappropriate oxidation of melanin. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, folks. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.